The Frame Awards is all about recognizing spaces and products that matter. Industry professionals representing a 15-person strong jury panel discuss their favorite projects of the month, consisting of a winner and honorable mentions. I really love the scale uh, of the spaces and how they blurred the lines between inside and outside. Uh, that project was really uh, well thought of instead of volume and space. It had a really uh, great narrative that's been integrated into the design. And also I felt like the material has its place and it's going to get reused somewhere, right? So the idea of that, the thought that's been put into that design was really interesting. And it was done in a new building context. I think what I liked about it is taking a humble brick and creating some very beautiful installation and then bringing a story onto the whole experience and knowing that these bricks can be reused across the city at some point. I thought it was a lovely kind of narrative, very interesting way of using a modular component. And what I really like about it, if you don't look at aesthetics, is that they give you the sense of being inside the kitchen. So you really also, all the chairs are focused on on the kitchen so you're not in in a bar but you're in the kitchen which you're going to look at the person who's going to make the coffee for you so it makes the craft more special and then I, I like the details like with the upcycling the the chairs that they use and just added another material to give it a second life and uh, it makes you rethink how you can design this is just a little bit on the opposite spectrum, but still it's it's making a statement that's very, very bold. They're using a lot of the materials up that's in the place and just keeping the finishes like as raw as it can be, but still trying to make it functional and making a really bold statement of we are making it very minimal and sustainable. Doing this little is really not easy when we go into detail and take a look at the photographs. There is thought and effort in every single piece, uh, down to the last chair, the last stool. Uh, I think it's very meticulously crafted. Uh, we shouldn't be fooled. It's a very, very interesting project. This is a project where pe the users are going to spend just five minutes every morning taking their and leaving. So giving that message in a very impactful way in five minutes is very important. I doubt the designers would have taken this route if this was a restaurant or somewhere that people would spend an hour perhaps. I was taken by how bold and uncompromising it was. And it's a really radical exploration of an idea, taking it to an extreme. And I think that, that there lies the value of the project is really questioning how much will we reusing? How much intervention do we have to create? within a space to create an experience. And I think they've done it quite successfully by really curating the moments and making us appreciate the beauty on, on what is decaying or what is not necessarily the aesthetic of the moment. And I think there is a lot of value of us learning to appreciate the existing fabric of our spaces and, and the beauty of the aging of objects rather than always jumping for what is the next trend, what is the next new thing. It's residential, so it's a, a very interesting balance between creating a character but leaving enough space for the person to feel at home and to make it its own. So they used a beautiful uh, material palette and I really also enjoyed the fact that they used textures, not only the colors, but really uh, and that gave it a very natural look. It expresses something very beautiful, but it leaves enough space for the person to use it. So it's these functional aspects and sustainable aspects of design that is combined with the aesthetic beauty, right? It's just one minimal material from the outside, but it's been used very elegantly. So I think it's the balance of both. For me, the most valuable thing about this project was how cohesive uh, its design process must have been and the end result is. This project could have easily been a candidate in the interior design uh, category and probably would still have won. 
it's not uncommon for designers to come up with a good design idea and then think about materiality or find a good idea and then find ways to make it sustainable. But with this one, I'm sure during the design process, all these were beautifully intertwined with its materiality, with its sustainable aspects, and with the space it, itself. They were very uh, cohesive, uh, and it's a very holistic approach. So for me, this is a really elegant uh, use of a material and really well embedded into the architecture of the building. So it's difficult to pull apart what, what is one component to the other. You know, the word cohesive was used before. I think it's, it's really true of this design. It's a clear concept to start with is reinterpreting traditional architectural components of the local context into a sophisticated and contemporary way and taking something like the wood into an organic expression makes the building quite uh, intriguing and also engages the sense of, you know, you're part of it and now I can, I can hear and you can smell it, you know, makes it a real sensory experience. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a fantastic way of applying material. In a society where the visual is getting more and more important for the general public, but day by day, uh, for someone to define iconic as a statement instead of visual, it's a breath of fresh air, I think. This building sort of set the tone for a new generation of building, revisiting what it means to use local material and have conceptual clarity and create a really sustainable and environmentally friendly urban landscape. So in that sense, it is iconic. It's sort of saying we, we're going ahead and doing something that has a positive impact on our environment. It's engaging the senses and this should be the new standard or we should be considering when we're building something that is really human-centric. Diverse experience, I would love. That would be nice. Beyond the aesthetics, by default, sustainable, but it's something I, I couldn't think of myself. There have always been trends and there will always be trends and um, they're ever more visible uh, to everyone and people just ask the designers to make them something that they have seen and liked um, and now they see too much and too often. I don't think we're out of that um, trend danger. Um, I don't think we will, ever will, but that also brings a great chance for good designers to rise above, above the trends. That gives them the ability to differentiate in terms of craft, in terms of talent. Landscape of workspace design is changing so much, so much, especially post COVID. So the future of work, uh, that's something I'm really excited about because now you have to really get what people want. Otherwise, they're not going to come to office, right? Like it's it's more like you need to get that in your design somehow. And uh, I'm happy that it's moving more towards that human centric approach. And people are people would like to come there for social interaction, not necessarily for everyday work. Uh, so there are these different components of work that's being explored, the flexible aspects of spaces and also the collaborative nature and uh, the connection to nature and all of that. So if you can provide all of these attributes in a workplace design, it's going to be a successful one and people are going to come. Well, I'm really looking forward to going beyond the visual. So I'm looking for environments and materials that really engage the senses that we get more to connect with the tactile, smell, sound, and spaces that really make us feel at peace with our environment and also to materials that are easy to recycle, but maybe bring in a layer of intelligence to them, you know, materials that can self-repair uh, in a sustainable way.